What's up, y'all? It's Dan, Crypto Camacho, back again. And hey, right now, we're going through some pains. The market has been crashing in the crypto sphere. The crypto markets, Bitcoin, Ethereum, massive amounts of altcoins are in the red. They've gone down tremendously in the last week, in the last few days. And is it going to continue or is it going to stop? I'm going to talk a little bit about the market crash what crypto is doing in the broader sense and what crypto means for the broader world going forward. Now, yes, we are in a market crash. You can see that, right? If you look at Bitcoin today, you'll see that Bitcoin has been crashing. This is the weekly chart and Bitcoin has been crashing somewhat, right? We saw a high of 74,000 and now we're down to $62,456 for one Bitcoin, okay? So now is Bitcoin really crashing or is Bitcoin just making a small correction here? You know, I personally think we're making a correction. We're not crashing to zero. Crypto is not going away. Um, crypto is here to stay for the long haul. And I'm going to explain many, many reasons why here in just a moment. But let's take a better look at this chart and let me show you what I think about the situation. OK, so right now, this is the monthly chart. And you can see in the last several month, bit, months, months, Bitcoin has has made a massive run up, okay? We've gone from $16,000 all the way up to $74,000 in the matter of months, right? It's been about a year, but we've had this massive run up on the monthly chart, okay? So are we crashing? No. Is there a correction? Yes, absolutely. Volume is still trending up a bit, right? You can see on the monthly chart, volume is still trending up a bit. Obviously, it's gone down since we crashed the last time but we are still going up in volume trend, okay? Now, is this the end of the bear market? Is this the end of the bull market? In the start of a bear market is what I meant. Um, I don't know. I'm not so sure. If you look over at the three-month chart, you can see that there still is a bit of room for us to go down on the, on the three-month chart. I can see eventually the price going back down to about 50K, maybe even down to 40K, um, you know, if we're lucky. But right now, it's hard to say if that's happening, if we're going to maintain at about 60K and jump back up and continue to the bull run, or if we're going to continue down. I think it's possible that we continue back up to just under 100K, and then we crash real hard back down to like 50, 40K, something like that, okay? Um, if you look at this chart here, that, that somewhat shows that indication of that. You can see in past, the run-up has been you know pretty high to about 20,000. Then we crashed down pretty hard to about 6,000 and go down, down, down all the way to about 3,000. Saw a bit of a run up, crash again, and then a spike all the way up to that $60,000, right? So we're seeing another uh, correction of that in the longer sense of the cycle. On the monthly charts, if you look, um, you can see very similar, right? We went way, way up, we came back down, went up again, we came back down slightly, and now we've shot up to the moon, okay? I think we're going to do something very similar here. It's just hard to say if we're going to we're going to hold at 62,000 about 60,000 um in this uh this correction that's going on right now. So I want to get into a little bit more of why I don't think you need to fear um about this correction. If you're a believer in crypto, if you hold crypto, I would not sell my crypto. If you're way down, don't sell, right? If you're slightly down, perhaps you can sell and get back in at a better time. But it all really depends on relatively where you are in your holdings, in your profit, in your loss uh, scenario, right? But why is crypto not going away? I mean, I am a big believer that eventually everything will be tokenized. Everything will be tokenized. Any type of transaction, any type of, type of data facilitation, any type of asset that can be tracked will eventually be tracked and tokenized on the blockchain and tracked to one degree or another. Also, after all these items have been tokenized, whether virtual or physical items, there will be markets and derivative markets to trade these items in ways that have never happened before, right? I mean, you're already seeing it now. Stocks are going to be commoditized, uh, through, or sorry, going to be uh, tokenized. Real world assets are going to be tokenized. Every aspect of finance is going to be tokenized and, and, and be in this form of uh, blockchain of cryptocurrency. You're seeing the advent of central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, right? In the game and in gaming industry, you're seeing a ton of potential that all games will have some sort of virtual asset component to them. They'll have some form of tokenization built into the gaming structure itself. Data and privacy is going to be blockchain based. It's going to become tokenized as well. That's going to take a little bit longer for everything data and privacy related to be tokenized, but identities are going to be spread out on these blockchains in 
and um, aligned with different data structures that, you know, that confirm and correlate what your identity is, what behavior you've elicited on the internet, what types of things have you done? What transactions have you made? All of this is going to be tokenized, right? So you don't have anything to fear. Right now, if you look at Michael Saylor and what he has been doing with, with MicroStrategy and their, their, uh, their strategy for that company, they hold more Bitcoin and profit out of more Bitcoin than they do out of any type of physical or operational um, aspect of the company. They don't make widgets. They don't make anything at MicroStrategy. They literally hold Bitcoin. They watch Bitcoin go up. They accumulate more and more Bitcoin in their holdings. They get more loans and they accumulate more Bitcoin and the price goes up. And they've actually been profitable, more profitable than the majority of companies in the S&P 500, right? This is insane. Is this the new strategy that folks are going to follow? I mean, is it more profitable to literally just buy cryptocurrencies or Bitcoins than it is to actually make physical assets or to make something and sell it? We are yet to see, right? But MicroStrategy is paving the way for that, that particular strategy. And it's going very well for them, right? Even with this correction, um, you know, you could see that these markets, this crypto market is not going away. It's only going to expand. Yes, it's going to go up and down. You're going to see ups and downs on the way, but it is only going to go up over time because it's a brand new technology, a brand new asset class that has the potential to track, monitor, and tokenize many, many, many different assets and commodities in the ecosystem today, in the economic kind of environment today. And we're seeing that play out. We've been seeing that play out since like 20, 2009, right? Um, through the last decade plus, we've seen that play out and it's not going to stop anytime soon. We're going to also have artwork and collectibles and unique types of artwork and collectibles, both on the physical side and on the digital side that are going to flourish in blockchain and cryptocurrencies, right? We're going to see unique tracking of assets and then unique markets that are created from the tracking of these assets, whether they're in the form of carbon credits, whether they're in the form of real world assets like gold, whether they're, uh, you know, data assets that are being tracked, you're going to see, you know, whether they're, whether they're gambling assets or gambling kind of, uh, um, um, sites that are set up, you're going to see the unique tracking of these assets and you're going to be seeing unique markets come out because of these assets that are being tracked. You're going to see derivative markets now off of all these different things that are going to be tracked and tokenized and put on the blockchain. You're going to see markets. You're going to be able to speculate on all these different things. You're going to be able to trade on all of these different things, right? And as we scale more and more and more, you know, what does that mean for the world? Are we going to see like a world stock market scenario where all stocks are tokenized and everything else is tokenized in the long run and people can, you know, buy, sell, trade, transact against all of these trackable and tokenized assets? I actually think we are going to see that eventually. It might still take some time to play out, but I think ultimately that is the nature of blockchain and that is what we're going to see. And it's going to get very, very interesting, right? As we need to scale more and more, we've seen Solano build up. We've seen BSV, you know, be, uh, uh, build up. We've seen base layer on Ethereum build up. Like what is the most scalable blockchain? That's yet to be determined, but it's going to be needed for sure as we grow in the crypto space, right? Another aspect of this is sovereignty. You know, so sovereignty, how do you ensure that you're free? Well, you could use privacy coins. You could use coins that are not trackable, not, you know, you're not able to track the transactions, for example. We're going to see more and more people wanting to be sovereign from banks, from institutions, from governments, you know, quite frankly. And we're going to see inventions and innovations on the blockchain to facilitate this type of sovereignty. You're going to see network stakes forming, as Balaji has pointed out. You know, governments are, are going to rely more and more on these network states. Right now, those are in the form of social media. I mean, think of how much the government needs Facebook, needs Instagram, needs all these Twitter, needs all these different social networks, right? X or Twitter has now become sort of the public town square where anything that happens is it basically goes through Twitter and you see it first. And the engagement and the social dynamics there are so, so incredibly important to politicians that that's not going to stop, right? But now with the advent of cryptocurrency and coupling social networks and uh, social media together, you're going to see a whole new form of these network states in the coming years, okay? And you've seen a glimpse of that with Pump.Fun. Pump.Fun was a very kind of first attempt or is a first attempt to sort of bring together these social networks and cryptocurrency in general, right? 
And you're going to see more and more of this happening and more and more of this won't be able to be stopped. Right now, it starts with meme coins. Um, it's decentralized finance on these meme coin markets, right? But you're seeing that they can't be stopped. You're seeing that they're only expanding. You're seeing that they're only growing. And you're seeing the market caps of these go through the roof. That is not going to stop. It's only going to get more and more sophisticated, more and more gamified, and more and more tied to social media and culture, right? And so as that happens, you know, it's going to create these ecosystems and these, these environments that you can interact with, that you could play with, that you could exchange against, that you could transact against, right? And it's going to create this dynamic sort of network state where, you know, you could participate in one sort of economy or one sort of um, affiliation, affiliated group if you follow the rules of that group, right? Governments are trying to do this with central bank digital currencies. There's going to be other forms that emerge, right? Um, so we're entering a very interesting time in the cryptocurrency space, in the blockchain space. Um, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. I think the chart that you've seen um, with, with Bitcoin, I think it's a blip. I think it's a blip in the overall um, momentum in the crypto space. I think that this is going to correct itself. It may drop further, but it ain't going away. It's only going to correct itself and it's going to go up even higher. I, I know it's going to go up even higher, but there could be a correction, right? I think we're going to go up a little bit more before we go back down. So we'll see how this plays out. This is not financial advice, but uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you think the crypto markets are over. Let me know if you think this crash is going to go down or if you think it's going to go you know, back the other way and we're still in a bull run. would love to hear your thoughts on the situation. I'm Dan Camacho. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.